Hello, this is George Demery, and here with another episode of Your Money Matters. You know, we've as over over the last number of weeks, we've talked about everything related to your money. You know, I mean, what are we trying to do? Uh, I've said many times that the great majority of of Americans are just not financially literate. It's not your fault. Schools don't teach it. The schools don't teach you how to handle your money. They don't teach you the value of, of having a good credit rating or what happens when you get into debt. So, you know, today we're going to spend a little more time on that fifth leg of what we do at Money Matters. Remember, we tried to help people become more financially literate. We look for education and business opportunities. We tried to help people think strategically, changing how you think. People become what they think about. And if you want to, be, to become more financially stable, you got to really change how you think. Fourth, you know, we talk about credit worthiness. I've shared with our audience and, and our members and our friends many times the value of a 700 credit rating. Tell you what, 750? 750, and you have a good debt to income ratio, there are very few things you can't purchase at a competitive interest rate. Very few. But your goal has got to be 700. But today we're going to talk a little bit about the three D's. First, debt. Now there, um, there, there, there is an initiative called D-Free. And it's, and it's, and it's based uh, in a church. And a, a guy by the name of Reverend Soares at a church out of, out of New Jersey, he started this D-Free movement because he realized that a majority of the people in his congregation were just in debt. He, he was wondering why people weren't giving so much, though when he went out and looked in his parking lot, there were a bunch of luxury cars out there because people were over leveraging what they were doing. So he was looking for ways, number one, to help his congregation live a more productive life and it grew to a national initiative. Well, he said that, that basically people have three challenges as it relates to their money. Challenge number one is debt. Debt. Well, what do you do? You know, how do you, how, how how do you grab it? What are some of the techniques you, you you need to use in order to get that debt to income ratio where you need it? Specifically, for an example, if you want to buy a house, remember that debt to ratio in buying a house should be at around 35 to 40 percent in order for you to buy a house. But this is this is what he said. The first thing you have to do is admit that there is a problem. No matter what the problem you may have, remember if you are an alcoholic, you cannot fix that problem until you admit that you have a drinking problem. If you have a debt issue, you have to admit, you have to let yourself know that this is my current situation. Remember what debt does. It threatens, it threatens your ability to build wealth. Now, what's wealth? Wealth is, is all your assets, all your assets, things that you own, uh, the, the, the balance that you, that, that 
that you have on, on uh, not the balance board, you have on your house after the balance, um, your, your cash on hand, every asset that you have minus your liabilities, that equals your wealth. So that gets in the way of you building long-term wealth. High interest rates. Well, the reason that leg four, the fourth initi initiative that we have as it relates to money matters, talks about credit worthiness is because of high interest rates. If you don't have at least, and I, I'm telling you, your goal has got to be 700. If you don't have a credit rating of at least 680, at, at least to 700, it is more likely that everything that you buy on credit, you're buying at a higher interest rate. And high interest rate costs you thousands and thousands of dollars. Let me give you, let me give you an example of, of the cost of, of high interest rates and what that does. I'm going to give you, give you a story about a person who bought a car a number of years ago, paid, had to finance $30,000 for that car, right? That person who had to buy that car had a, had a credit number of 776, that was a high credit number. When she bought that car, because her credit rating was so good, and what and really what your credit rating tells you tells a person is that you are a person of your word, that you will pay your bills when you say you're gonna you pay your bills, right? Well, she got that money on a 1.25 interest, at, at 1.25 in interest. It's almost interest free. And what made it even, even more spectacular, if I could use that word, is that she got that car on a five-year note. So she borrowed $30,000 over 60 months at a 1.25 interest rate. Well, over that period, she paid $962 in interest. Over time, that's almost interest free. The cost of that money, the cost of that $30,000 that she borrowed literally cost her $15 a month over a five year period. It was six, seven years ago, eight years ago, car paid off, but during that period, paid less than $1,000 in interest. Now let's suppose, let's suppose that a credit number was not nearly as good. Let's suppose that credit number was more 670, maybe even 680. Well, in order to, to purchase that car, now, now let me tell you the significance of this. The average cost of a car today, brand new car, is forty thousand dollars. So that's if you had a ten thousand dollar trade in, and or ten thousand dollars in cash, and you had to finance for had to finance thirty thousand dollars. If that was at five percent, that money would have cost her four thousand dollars. Same car. Same everything else. But because she was not as credit worthy as the person who has a credit number over 750, then she had to borrow that money at a higher interest rate. That cost her about, that would have cost her at about $67 a month. Now, now think about that. You got good credit, you can buy a nice car, it could cost you $15 a month. If you have so-so credit, that money was going to cost you $67 a month. Now, let's suppose that her credit number was more like $620, all right, $630 or under. That money, if the bank, if the bank decided to lend you the money, that money would have cost more like 10%. 
that would have cost her almost $8,600 over the course of that five years in order to purchase, to purchase that car and would, have, and would have cost her $137 a month. Now, think about that. Now, the, the other downside of that is because if the interest was almost $9,000, now, when she pulled that car off the lot that she paid $30,000 for, it's probably now because the minute you pull off the lot, you don't get retail value, you get wholesale value. So now, the, if she traded the car in the next day, depending on the make of the car, she could maybe get at most $26,000. But now she owes another almost $9,000 in interest. So now if you take your twenty you take your twenty six thousand dollars, you add your nine thousand dollars to it, now she owe, now she owes thirty five thousand dollars on a car that she can't get but twenty six thousand dollars for. That's when your wealth goes sideways. Do you understand? That's what debt does to you. Let's move let let's move on as 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 it relates to your debt. There are a few things that the Bible says from a biblical perspective when it talks about debt. Let me share this. Psalms 3721. The, the wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. Number two, we cannot serve God and money. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. That's Matthew 6, 24. And finally, this is Proverbs 22, 7. The rich rule over the poor and the borrower is the slave to the lender. Debt is a form of slavery. Let me tell you, let me tell you what, how being out of date, tell you what that does. When you have a good credit number and you're out of debt, it gives you options. And what options give you is power. And when you have options and power, then you can choose who you want to borrow money from. Think about the times that you tried to get credit and you're waiting for a day or the next day or three days later just to see if you got your credit approved. But if you have a strong, strong, strong credit rating and your debt, again, your debt to income ratio is down where you don't have a lot of credit card debt, then you can choose who you want to b borrow your money from and you can shop your interest rates. It just gives you power. The other D word that we're going to spend some time with today is delinquencies. In the D free mo movement, it says, again, there's three struggles that we have as a people and especially black people. One is debt. The next is delinquencies. Late payments. Late payments cause bad credit scores. Late payments, when you do that, not only are you paying late payments, but you're paying fees. We had a person on Money Matters last week, uh, uh, Sandra Strong, who helps people in businesses, helps them to create plans in order to o open their businesses. And the thing that she talked about, the word she talked about with those folks in their business is the word integrity. Paying your bills on time. She said there was a person who had a business, was making money every, every month, but wasn't paying any taxes. You will not be able to avoid taxes. 
hadn't paid taxes, hadn't paid taxes, and then he gets a, a tax bill for over a hundred thousand dollars. Well, I asked, I said, why so high? She said, well, the original bill was only about 38. But because of the late, the late fees, b b because of all the penalties, a $38,000 tax bill can grow to be a $100,000 bill quickly. Delinquencies kill you. Delinquency kills your ability to build wealth. Delinquency kills you, your, your ability to borrow money at a competitive interest rate. And delinquency say that you are not a person of your word. Now, listen to me, friends and family. Listen to me, members and friends and family. Everybody on an occasion has a problem. I mean, this pandemic caused a ton of problems for a ton of people. Do not get me wrong. But I've said this maybe 10 or 12 times in, in weeks past. Let me say it again. If you cannot pay your bill on time, no matter what that bill is, what you do is get on the phone and call your creditor. Be proactive. Don't be reactive. If, if, if a bill is due on, if a bill is due in a week, and you know that there's more wheat there than money available, get on the phone, call your creditor, and make some plans on how you're going to pay it. Try to your best of your ability to not to let that go against your credit rating. Putting your head in a hole and ignoring it will not make it go away. Again, debt and delinquencies are an issue. The third D word happens to us, and it really happens to us, and we're gonna get into more detail on about that on this one today, is deficit. Well, what do I mean by deficit? That means you are living above your means. Never live above your means. If you can't pay cash, do not buy it. Do not use credit cards for wants. Use credit cards for needs. I don't care who you talk to. I don't care who the financial advisor is. I don't, I don't care if it's Dave Ramsey or anybody else. They will tell you that is important, one, to budget, and two, to create an emergency fund. But if you don't have a budget on emergency fund, and, you, and, and, and your AC went out, your refrigerator went out, you're going to have some problems, and you need to use a credit card, only use a credit card for things that you need. Don't go window shopping. Let me tell you something about, about smartphones. 97% of every adult in America has a smartphone. Guess which ethnicity, right? Guess which ethnicity reacts quicker to ads on smartphones than anybody else. Now, everybody, don't get me wrong, everybody reacts to ads on smartphones. That's how people market now. But African -American, Americans have a tendency to react to ads on smartphones quicker than other e any other ethnicity. That means they're purchasing on emotion. They're, they're, they're pur purchasing on impulse. Debt is caused when you buy things on impulse. And we've all done it. I've done it. Who doesn't have ads that follow them all the time? Do not allow them, I've said this many times too, do not allow them to put you in a position where you buy things that you don't need and, and two weeks later you wish you hadn't have done it. So, what do you do? What, 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 do, you, what do you do when you find yourself, you're in debt and, and, you're, and, you're, trying to get, and you're trying to get out of debt 
what are some of the things that, that you need to do to, to do that? I'm going to, I'm going to share some of those with you today. This comes from an article written um, a few years ago by Christian Super. And he says this, he says, number one, pray on it. Now, I totally agree with that. Pray and ask God to help you. But remember this, prayer without work does not work. Pray on it, but you do what you need to do to help you to get out of debt. And I'm going to share some of the other things that he says. Two, establish a written budget. Man, this is, this is tough. That brings up another D word, and that's discipline. That do, do you have the discipline to create a written budget and to live on that written budget? That's tough. But I'm telling you, every successful business and most every successful business person has, unless they're very, very wealthy, live on a budget. There's no successful business anywhere who exists without a line item budget. They know where their money is coming in and they know what's the, where their money is going out. And you will not realize how much money is going out until you put it on paper. Isn't it amazing what we spend 10 bucks on or 20 bucks on that we're wasting money. Number three, according to the author, list all your possessions. Now, this, this, is, a, this is a toughie as well. It says list what you own. Home, car, furniture, evaluate what you really need to live on and what you really don't need. And consider selling things you don't need. Heck, Dave Ramsey goes as far as to tell you sell your car, you know. If, if you got a, a, a $580 car payment, sell your car, get yourself to a $300 car payment, take the other $200 and pay towards your debt. Easier said than done, but, re but remember about discipline, you either suffer the pain of discipline or you'll suffer the pain of disappointment. So if you suffer the pain of discipline up front, then at the end you'll see, you'll see major results rather than the other way around. It's tough. Number four, list all your liabilities. What do you owe? Who do you owe money to? If you have credit card debt, and let's suppose you have two or three credit cards, there's two ways, and you've probably heard this before, I'll share it again. There's basically two ways to eliminate debt on, on loans, credit cards, even as, as on your home loan. Some people say that, that some, some, some debt's good debt. I don't believe any debt is good debt. Now, I think some debt is better than other debt, but I don't believe any debt is good debt. I've had a person say, well, your, George, you know, your mortgage payment is a good debt. You know, is it 3% or whatever, and that's good? No, that's better debt. That's not good debt. So two ways to do it. One, you look at, at, the, at the balance of, of, of the piece of debt that has the, lowest, <clears throat> that has the lowest balance. You target that. You put all your resources on, on, on that piece of debt until it's paid off. Then you take that, it's called snowball. Then you take that amount of money and put it toward the next smallest balance until you pay it off. The other, in the way that I, I personally like a little more, is called avalanche. That's where you look for the debt with the highest interest rate, the debt that's costing you the most money. You attack that debt and you go down until you get the lesser amount of interest rated debt until you pay it all off. Either way you do it, 
It's a plan. It's a plan. Number five, and this is what the author says, create a debt repayment schedule is what we're talking about. Either use the snowball or avalanche, but you got to use something. You've got to have a plan to get you out of debt. Number six, and I'm, I'm going to tell you again, audience, they all say the same thing, no matter, no matter who, who, the, who the financial advisor is. Consider additional income, second jobs, side hustles. Be willing to work on it to get out of debt. And finally, don't accumulate any more debt. Now, this is probably going to air right during the holiday season. Do not allow Christmas to put you in, in debt. Let me tell you what happens with that. Let me t it's if you borrow $1,000 on a credit card for Christmas gifts, and you pay a minimum payment, minimum payments using no more than three or four percent of the principal. So if it's a thousand dollars, minimum payment if it's at four percent would be would be forty dollars. Most of them are less than that, by the way. It would take you eighteen months if you pay minimum payments to pay it off. If you only pay minimum payments for the next nine to ten months and it's Christmas season again and you did the same thing, that's how debt accumulates. Do not add new unnecessary debt. And finally, let me share with you reasons we as a people get into debt. According to Reverend Surrey's from the D-Free Movement, this is his opinion, and I, I agree with some of this. He calls it, you know, how we spend and, and, and what we do to spend money on. Dave Ramsey says there's three basic money principles, money disciplines you got to have. One is spending, one is saving, and one is giving. I think there's a fourth, I've said many times, and that's earning, because if you're not earning, you can't do the other three. But this is what Mr. Surrey says about spending and why we do it. He calls the first compensatory spending he says seeks to compensate for a sense of unworthiness thereby seeking to gain significance say so we sometimes spend to make ourselves feel better that we believe it gives us more self-worth we are more likely to buy designer brand Black people are more likely to buy things based on brand than most any other ethnicity. <clears throat> Though a shirt with a horse on it may cost 60 bucks and one that's equal quality without a horse may be 30. And you could put that 30 bucks into your emergency fund. Number two, he calls it Conspicuous spending. Well, what's that mean? It's like trying to keep up with the Joneses. Well, they bought a big house. I'm going to buy a big house. They bought a Mercedes. I'm going to buy a Mercedes. Their kids are going here. My kids are going there. Don't you ever care about what people think. You do what's right for you. Don't do it to keep up with the Joneses. And finally, he calls it confused spending. That's, we've talked about this earlier. He talks about spending, spontaneous spending, spending without thinking, spending based on emotion. You know, I asked my son a, a, a few weeks ago, man, how, how much you spend on coffee every week? Because I read an article that said the, the, the average millennial spends $2,000 a year just on coffee. He added up. He said, you know what, Dad? I think I, 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 think I spent about $2,000 a year on coffee. 
look for better ways of making decisions on spending. So I hope today, and we've only touched on, on a few things. These shows only last about 30 minutes. But if you need help on, on how to handle your debt, on how to increase your credit rating, or anything that I can do to help you, please, please feel free to, go, to, to call us at SSC Live TV. And I will do my very best to help. But let me say this. Do not ask for help if you're not ready to change how you think and change your habits. Well, that's another episode of Your Money Matters. Remember, at St. Stephen Baptist Church, we want you to live a balanced life. And now, also remember this. Money will not make you happy. I'm just telling you this. Well, you may not trust me on this. Now, will money put you in a position to live a, a productive life? Absolutely it will, and, and you need it. But money will not make you happy. Money will make you more of what you already are. If you're a happy person, you'll just be a happy person with more money. If you're a mean person, you'll just be a mean person with more money. So with that being said, again, thank you for joining us this week. And as always, at Your Money Matters and at St. Stephen Baptist Church, God loves you and so do we.